Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about making complaints, apologizing, and providing solutions. For this lesson, I'm going to focus on making complaints and apologizing and so on in customer service situations. In these cases, I'm focusing on restaurant, bar, cafe, and hotel-related situations. Let's get started. First, I want to look at how to make complaints. I've chosen some patterns you can use to make a variety of different complaints in a few different situations. Let's begin with these two. The first way to make a complaint is my plus machine isn't working. So in this complaint pattern, we use some kind of machine. This can be like an electronic device. It can be uh, something that doesn't use electricity, but that is like a machine. It's something that uh, has many parts that we need to work together. So we use isn't working when we're talking about a problem with a machine. So for example, my smartphone isn't working or my refrigerator isn't working, my air conditioner isn't working, some kind of machine isn't working. This isn't is is not and working means functioning, but we do not say functioning. Functioning sounds way too formal and is not a conversational word. Instead, we say my machine isn't working. You might also hear, my machine isn't working properly or my machine isn't working correctly. So that shows there's some kind of problem. This is a common way to make a complaint about some type of machine. My computer isn't working. Then this next one is similar. It is the object is broken or you could say my or his or her to be specific about whose object. But in this pattern, we can use any object that includes machines. So when we say is broken, it just means this thing is not functioning correctly or there's some problem with it. I cannot use this object in this condition. There's some problem. So we can use machines in this pattern. The smartphone is broken or my smartphone is broken. My computer is broken. That has the same meaning here. But in this pattern, we can use things that are not machines, like my chair is broken, or my hairbrush is broken, or this pot in my kitchen is broken. So you can use is broken to refer to many different objects, many different things in many situations. This pattern is used for machines, for like electronic devices. So these two are very, very useful for explaining when something is not functioning correctly. Okay, on to the next one. This one is good in a restaurant or bar or cafe. We use this expression when the wait staff brings you something and it is not the thing you ordered. So you ordered item A, they bring you item B. You say, this isn't what I ordered. This isn't what I ordered or I didn't order this. So usually you'll say, this isn't what I ordered. I ordered A, this is B. So I ordered, past tense, A, this is B. So we start with, this isn't what I ordered, or sorry, I don't think this is what I ordered to make it a little softer. This isn't what I ordered, or I didn't order this. Okay, on to the next one. The next one is kind of useful in hotels and other accommodation related situations. It depends a little bit, the final sentence depends on the singular or the plural form of the item in question. So when, we're wa when we want to use this pattern, it's because we are missing something in the room, in our hotel room that we expect to be there, that should be there, or there is something in the room that should not be there. So that's why there's this no or no in parentheses. Let's first take a look at what we do in this pattern when we have an object that we use in the plural form. So for example, there are no towels in my room. There are no towels in my room. So in a hotel room, maybe I expect there will be towels in my hotel room so I can take a shower or a bath. But there are no towels in my room. I want to make a complaint. I use this pattern to do it because 
towels, plural, needs to take this R. There are no towels pattern. If, however, I want to maybe say the singular, I want to use the singular form of something. Maybe if I expect there should be a refrigerator in my room, but there's not, I could say, there is no refrigerator in my room. There is no refrigerator in my room, or there's no air conditioner in my room. I expected it, but it's not here. So we use this singular pattern with is. So is matches with a singular object. Then let's compare this to something that is in the room that we do not want in the room. For example, there are flies in my room. There are flies in my room. Maybe there are hundreds of flies or bees or something. There are flies in my room. So again, we use the plural flies or bees or whatever kind of insect, uh, and we use are to match this plural item. There are flies in my room or there are bees in my room. Then, if we need to talk about a single item, we need to use this pattern, but we also need to use an article, a or an, before the object if it is a countable noun. So, for more about countable and uncountable nouns, please check the countable nouns and uncountable nouns videos on our YouTube channel or on our website. So, for example, if there's an animal in your room, there is a squirrel in my room. So I don't expect a squirrel to be in my room, I'm shocked. There is a squirrel in my room. So I use a because my single, my singular uh, noun, squirrel, begins with s. So a squirrel in my room. Or maybe in a crazy situation, there is an elephant in my room. So I use an in that case because elephant begins with an E sound, that E eh sound. There is an elephant in my room. So we use this pattern to express something that is in the room that we do not want there, and we use the negative pattern to talk about something we expect to be in the room, but that is not there. Okay, let's go to the last complaint. This one is good in restaurant and bar and cafe situations. I'm allergic to this. I'm allergic to this, or you can change this to the item. I'm allergic to bread, or I'm allergic to nuts. You can change this to be specific. I'm allergic to means I have an allergy to. I have an allergy to something. We use I'm, I am, I'm allergic to. We use the preposition to in this case. Okay, so we have some basic complaints we can use in customer service situations. Now let's see how we apologize. So if you are staff, or if you need to understand clearly, which everybody does, the response from the staff, let's take a look at these expressions. When you're apologizing, please be careful about using the expression, I'm sorry. So I'm sorry expresses a very basic feeling. I am sorry. However, please note, we use this expression when we personally made a mistake. So we use this a lot in like friendships and when we're talking to our family members. So I made a mistake, I'm sorry. Like I forgot to buy milk, I'm sorry. It was my mistake. In customer service situations then, sometimes it's not your mistake. It's someone else's mistake or it's a company mistake. It's something, just the situation was not correct somehow. So if you say, I'm sorry, it sounds like maybe you are the person to blame. So here are some better ways to apologize for something. Here, I'm terribly sorry about the mistake. So this is a professional way to apologize if you indeed, if you were the person that made the mistake. For example, you didn't, the customer says, this isn't what I ordered, and you check and you're like, oh no, I made a mistake. You can say, I'm terribly sorry about the mistake. Terribly means so but this is a more formal way to express an apology. I'm terribly sorry about the mistake, or I'm terribly sorry for the mistake. You can use either here, no difference in meaning, or I'm terribly sorry about that as well. So in some cases, you don't want to say the mistake, just I'm terribly sorry about that. There was some kind of strange situation. So this sounds like a more professional way of saying I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry about the mistake, 
you did something, or that if the situation is not so good somehow. On to this next one. We apologize for the inconvenience. We apologize for the inconvenience. Please note that we're beginning this expression with we. Here, I sounds like me, just me, one person. We is something we use when we're apologizing or when we're talking for a group or you're talking for your company or for your organization. So this is very common in emails. We apologize for the inconvenience. For the inconvenience means we apologize for causing you a problematic situation or this is not a convenient situation for you. We're sorry for that. That's what this means. We apologize for the inconvenience. You might say that in response to something like this, like there are no towels in my room. The staff at the hotel might say, oh, we apologize for the inconvenience. So that's how they might begin to fix the problem. We apologize for the inconvenience. You might also see this uh, in road construction situations. There are signs on the road that say, we apologize for the inconvenience, like we're doing road construction at this time. Okay, this one is useful. The next one is useful when you hear bad news. Sometimes in customer service situations, an upset customer will share something that's not related to you but they want to just express some unhappy feeling or whatever. You can also use this with friends and family too, when there's a bad situation, but you are not related to the situation. So like for example, someone lost their job or they lost like their wallet or their car keys or something. You can respond with, I'm so sorry to hear that. Or to make less of an emphasized statement, I'm sorry to hear that. So I'm so sorry to hear that. This part is important, to hear that. I'm so sorry, again, means I made a mistake. I'm so sorry means I made a mistake. I'm so sorry to hear that means I feel sad or I feel sorry for you when I hear that information. I'm so sorry to hear that. So use this when you hear bad news, bad news. Okay, last one here is a very formal apology for a very big mistake. We deeply apologize for the error. We deeply apologize for the error. So maybe in this case, like, uh, there, are, there are already people in my room. <laughs> like you might walk into a hotel room and someone else is in your hotel room and you say, oh my gosh, there are already people in my room. There are people in my hotel room. They might say, we deeply apologize for the error. So this is similar to we apologize for something. We deeply apologize. That means very, very much. We deeply apologize for the error or for the mistake you might hear too. In this case, error and mistake mean the same thing. Error sounds a little bit more uh, formal. We deeply apologize for the error. Okay, finally then, let's talk about giving solutions. So how does staff, how do people in the situation try to fix the problem, uh, make the customer happy? You'll notice all of these begin with we'll or I'll, we will or I will. We use will in all of these because the speaker is making a decision in the conversation. So this is new information. The staff is getting a complaint from the customer. The staff's responsibility is to make a decision in that moment to help the customer. So we don't use going to generally in response to these. We use will. For example, I'll arrange for someone to fix it right away. So for example, my air conditioner isn't working. Might say, we apologize for the inconvenience. I'll arrange for someone to fix it right away. So in this case, yes, I've mixed we and I in example sentences, but you might hear, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. I'll arrange for someone to fix it right away. So that sounds more like a little bit of personal responsibility or to make it more of like a company feeling, we apologize for the inconvenience, we'll arrange for someone to fix it right away. So arrange for someone means we're going to call someone, some person, like some repair person, to come to where you are to fix the problem. We'll arrange for someone to fix it right away. Another solution related sentence, we'll get a replacement for you immediately. We'll get a replacement for you immediately. So for example, the chair in my room is broken. They might say, oh, I'm terribly sorry about that. 
or we're terribly sorry about that, we'll get a replacement for you immediately. So to get a replacement means to acquire, to obtain a replacement of that item. So you might hear, we'll get a new chair or we'll get a replacement chair for you immediately. But replacement just means replacement of that thing you mentioned. Immediately here and right away in this one, in this case they mean roughly the same thing. Immediately sounds a little faster and like with a little more urgency, like maybe it's an emergency situation. We'll get a replacement for you immediately. Right away sounds like Polite, yes, and it's going to happen quickly. It doesn't sound so like urgent, it doesn't sound like emergency level, like immediately does though. Okay, next expression, we'll prepare the correct dish or the correct drink right away. So this is in response to this. This isn't what I ordered. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about the mistake. We'll prepare the correct dish right away will prepare the correct drink right away. So that's how you explain that the thing the customer originally ordered is going to come soon. Again, we'll prepare uh, the correct dish or drink. Probably we'll is best in this situation because in most cases, the person taking customer orders is not the person also cooking food or making drinks. So we'll sounds like our staff will prepare this now. Okay. Next one, we'll send some to you right away, or we'll send one to you right away. This is in response to a complaint like this. As we talked about before, singular and plural are important to consider here. Same thing with the answer. For example, there are no towels in my room. Oh, we're very sorry to hear that. We're very sorry for the inconvenience. We'll send some to you right away. We'll send some towels or we'll send a few towels. So you need to consider, is this a singular thing or a plural thing? Towels is plural, so some is a nice choice. Or we'll send a few, so not just one. If however it's one, if however it's one item, like there's no refrigerator in my room, They'll say, we'll send one to you right away. We'll send one to you right away. If you say some, it sounds like you're going to get more than one refrigerator. We'll send you some refrigerators right away, plural. So just one refrigerator. Please keep this in mind when you're answering this question. Finally, I'll take this away. I'll take this away. This is in response to, I'm allergic to this. So I received a dish, I'm allergic to this. They might say, oh, we deeply apologize for the error. I'll take this away. Or I'm very sorry about the mistake. I'll take this away. That means I will remove this dish from your table or from the place you are sitting. I'll, again, take this away. So these are some sample solutions. Again, please consider using will. All of these use will because we're making a decision in the moment of speaking. So I hope that this lesson was helpful for you both in making complaints and in understanding and providing apologies and solutions. Of course, there are many more ways to make complaints and to apologize and to give solutions. So if you have any questions or comments or if there's another idea that you have, please feel free to include it in the comment section of this video. Also, if you like this lesson, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and check us out at EnglishClass101.com for some other things that can help you with your English studies. Thanks very much for watching this lesson and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.